Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at widgets inside Filament. Specifically, today's video is focused on statistic widgets, which is these kind of cards that display some sort of statistics or number or trend or data. There are two other types of widgets, which is uh, charts like these, as well as tables. I'm going to have separate videos for those. So for today's video, we're going to be focusing on these widgets over here, which, is, which are known as the kind of stats widgets okay and if you guys are wondering uh, what is this this is the filament demo i will try to leave the link in the description i'm just showing it using it here to showcase exactly what we are going to do before we actually code it okay so let's get started i have a fresh filament 3 project obviously uh, we have some existing code from the previous videos but uh, in order to follow along we just need a filament project or any filament application you have and you should be able to follow along you don't need any previous code to get started. Just install Filament and you're ready to go. Okay, so the first step for us is to actually create our widgets. So let's move to our code editor. I have VS Code over here. Open up the terminal. So the first step is to create the widget classes. And this is very easy to do, guys. Just type the following command. PHP Artisan make Filament widget. So that's the command for it. It's kind of similar to a Filament resource that we have used already. And then after that, you need to pass in your widget's name. You can name yours whatever you like. In this case, I'll name mine a test widget. And then hit enter. A uh, lot will go ahead and open up this kind of interactive menu for you. And it's going to ask you for the first, uh, I guess, question is what type of widget you want. So as I uncovered, there are three types, but we're going to be using a stats overview. So hit a stats overview to get those cards. And then the next one asks if it belongs to a specific resource. It does not. I'm going to hit enter. And last but not least, it asks you where would you like to create this. So the admin panel basically means your filament folder. It's not your app filament. And then app live wire, that's actually where your regular library components are. I generally prefer the first option. I don't like to mix my filament code with my regular live wire code. So I'll select the first option and hit enter. And filament will go ahead and actually create this widget class for us. It's going to be inside filament. There is now a new directory of widgets. And then inside that, we have test widget or whatever you named yours. So as you guys can see, it's a very simple class that extends the base widget, right, from the filament namespace. But what we are really concerned about is this get stats method. This is basically where we return what kind of data or information is shown on the page. Okay, now the way uh, it works is very simple. And you may have noticed there is actually an extra class imported here which isn't used. So we're going to use this stat class to actually show these kind of, uh, you know, cards over here, okay? I'm not going to call these widgets anymore. I guess I'll just call them stats because you can have multiple stats or multiple of these cards in a single widget, which is a bit unique and different from other admin panel kind of creators. So in order to actually show one of these guys, we need to go ahead and use this stat class. So just do stat make and this is similar to how you you know create columns or forms inside your uh, resources or form elements and this make class accepts two arguments so the first one is going to be the title of the card which is this one over here such as this new customer so i'll name mine a new users and then the second argument is the actual data itself right which is this one over here right so i, I just I guess I'm going to load it from the database. Let's do a user count, okay? And I do need to import my user class. So let's do one more time. And as you guys can see, we have imported it. So again, you can access the database here as well using eloquent, you know, models. Uh, so you're free to do that. And that's it. So now we have created our first card. Let's go ahead and save this. I'll go back to our actual application. And if I just do a quick reload, we are able to see this new stats that we have over here. And now by default, Filament detects all your widgets automatically if they are placed under the Filament widgets folder or directory. So it has like an auto discovery. So we don't need to actually kind of import them or register them. They just automatically are registered. So that's it guys, super simple. Now on the demo I showed you guys, we had some extra bells and whistles. We had this kind of little description. We had an icon. We had, you know, this little chart at the bottom. So let's go ahead and also see how we can add those things. So it's very easy to do. So the first one is going to be our uh, description. And to do that, you can go ahead and chain call a couple of extra methods on this make method. So the first one, I'm going to move this to a new line so it's easier to see on the video. 
is called a description and obviously it we can add a description so in, in this case i'm going to say uh, new users that have joined i don't newly joined users whatever you guys want to add so any description you want i'll just add this and if we go back and we do we do a reload as you guys can see we get this nice looking description over here and next up is going to be an icon for the description and this is also easy to do you can call a method called a description icon just like so and the icons here are going to use hero icons so this is similar to the icons used inside your resources so if you have already worked with resources you know exactly how this works so for example uh, in the resources if you wanted to change the icon you could use something like this hero icon the type of the icon and the icon name so i'm going to go ahead and just copy this icon from one of my resources but it's the exact same way okay we can go ahead and use hero icons and if you haven't used hero icons just go ahead open up google i already have it open but just type in hero icons and it is going to be the first link that pops up okay so you can use any of the icons over here for example let me search for user and see what we have let's say i want a user group i'll just copy this and uh, you need to go ahead and change the last part to user group okay just like that all right so now that we have done that let's go ahead and do a reload and as you guys can see we got our icon now you can also move the icon to be from here to the kind of front over here by passing in the second argument over here so if you look at the method the kind of definition we have the icon itself and then the, it accepts the position so there is an enum of icon position we can go ahead and use that so i'll just do icon position and i'm showing you guys the import in case you want to kind of uh, you know manual add it in case you're not getting the auto suggestion but it's going to be this enum class and this enum class has a before and an after right so you can kind of guess what it does i'll go ahead and i'll use uh, before all right that's it so this will move our icon before the description and obviously the after is the default value it's going to put it after so i'm going to reload and as you can see the icon moved to the left just like that okay so that's pretty good uh, last thing we need to cover guys is this little chart at the bottom that you can use to show kind of uh, show a trend and this one is very easy to do as well just call another method of chart as you guys can see and this chart method accepts an array of your y values on the chart so basically you need to go ahead and give all of these values and it's going to plot them so i'm just going to say let's say one three five I'm just going to uh, increase them so i'm going to say 10 20 and then let's say 40 something like this it's an upward trend and if i save it and i'll go back as you guys can see it looks like this so it's useful for showing just trends itself it's not a full-fledged chart if you want to do that uh filament obviously has its own chart widgets that you can use so this one is mostly used to kind of show a trend and if you hover over it sometimes you can see the values as you guys can see but it's a bit hard to do you have to exactly be on the exact location now if you want to change the color uh, that's also easy to do you can go ahead and call another method of color and here we can pass in any of the supported colors that comes with filament now there are these are kind of similar to bootstrap colors but if you don't have them memorized or you're not familiar with them guys go ahead open up the filament documentation and just type in color and it is going to be basically the first thing that pops in in the documentation okay so if we open it up my internet is very slow today for some reason so if you scroll down basically these are the default support a color danger gray info and as you can see info corresponds to blue we have primary to amber uh, success and kind of warning and you can also register your own custom colors definitely look at the documentation on kind of the available colors in this case i'll go ahead and i'll type in success for green this is exactly similar to how bootstrap works if you guys have uh, used it so i'll save this up uh, we do a quick reload and as you guys can see we have our chart set up so this is very similar to what we initially saw in the filament kind of demo itself okay so that's it guys for charts before we end the video i don't want the video to be too long and bore you guys i want to show you guys exactly where this automatic kind of discovery or registering happens for uh, widgets and that is done inside your filament configuration now the configuration by default is inside your app service provider so go inside app providers 
filament over here. As you guys can see, there is an admin panel provider. This is where your widgets are kind of configured. So if you take a look at this panel method, and even if you scroll down a little bit, here uh, there are two method calls, one called discover widgets, which is used to automatically discover your widgets. And if you guys look at what's kind of uh, written here, it is actually pointing out to our app filament widgets directory. So basically this command over here, or this method call, is telling to filament, hey, look for our widgets inside here, right? So if you add a widget or a class inside here, it's going to be automatically added to this dashboard page. And then there is another section called widgets where you can manually register widgets. So, uh, and by default, there are these two widgets, account widget and filament info widgets, which is kind of these two that come to, with filament by default. So if you want to disable these two guys, that's something I always do when I create a new filament project. Basically come over here and either comment this out or delete them. I'll just delete them. You can have this be empty. Uh, there won't be any issues. And if we do a reload, as you guys can see, this is how it looks, okay? And if you have obviously created any custom pages or, you know, you want to add it to your resources, you can always obviously go ahead and add them here as well. So I can do text, test the widget class. So let's say I had this inside a separate folder and it wasn't automatically discovered. So I could just go ahead and manually add it as well. Make sure you always import these guys. I don't always mention them in the videos. I assume you do it, but always again, make sure that you're importing your classes as well. And if I go over here now, Obviously, it was already imported. Maybe uh, I'll mess this up. So it's not automatically imported. As you can see, we are able to see it here, even though I kind of broke this automatic discovery. So if I remove the manual register, we don't see it anymore. Okay, so uh, that's the basics of it, guys, for uh, setting up your widgets. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and learned something new. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below. Uh, before we end, guys, one more thing. You can also add multiple of these stats in the same widget. So uh, it's just something I forgot to mention. But you can actually have multiple stats as well. It's not just limited to one. As you guys can see, I'll, I'll just literally copy paste it multiple of these. So we have four of these. And if we reload, as you can see, we get all four, you know, displayed over here. I just thought it was important for you guys to know. And yeah, that's it guys for today's episode. I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions, as always, you can ask me in the comment section below and I'll try to help you guys out if I know the answer. And make sure you smash that like button and subscribe for more content. And I see you guys on the next video. Have a great day. Bye.